Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. This video is a book review of the wonderful Under the Stars of Paris by Mary Birchall. This book was originally published in 1954. I own this 1970s edition, which I'm not sure whether I hate it or whether I love it. Perhaps a bit of both. <laughs> this is a book that has been recommended to me a couple of times because I love books from the kind of mid 20th, early 20th century. And I love fictional books on fashion. I love books that kind of take you into that vintage fashion world just automatically through the pages of a novel. I love that. And this is a book where, that I have been recommended a few times now. Um, and I finally got around to reading it. Oh, I loved it and have to talk about it with you because I think you are really gonna enjoy this book as well. As long as you like the same things that I do, that is, <laughs> obviously. So as I said, this book is from the 1950s, 1954 to be precise. And this is about a woman who, by the end we work out her age, she's 23. And she is in Paris, her name's Anthea, she's in Paris, um, to escape her home life. So she is um, English, um, lived in England, and her father has recently remarried to a woman that she really dislikes and she wants to be out of that world. Um, Anthea was engaged to a man um, and all was going really well. She was planning the wedding, the wedding planning was going well. And then one day her fiance says to her, I'm in love with another woman. And of course, Anthea breaks off the engagement. She lets him go and she is left heartbroken. She was very much in love with him, very much looking forward to her future um, as his wife, and that's all changed now. And so she decides that she wants to escape and she decides to go to Paris. So she takes what money she has and off she goes. And she tries to get bits of work here and there, but she is definitely running out of money. And Anthea is just kind of walking down the streets in Paris, and we feel really sorry for her at this point because it's sad. And she's walking down the street and she sees this man that she kind of recognises and he recognises her. She can't remember his name but she's like, I'm sure I know him from somewhere. They end up talking and she realises, oh yes, I have met him before. But it turns out that he is the cousin of the woman that her fiancé left her for. Does that make sense? So her ex-fiancé his new fiance, Eve, that's her name, this man, Roger, is her cousin. And Anthea's like, as you can imagine, she just kind of wants to escape, like, oh my goodness, no, don't wanna bring up all those feelings again. But she stood outside hairdressers and she's like, she lies essentially. She says, oh, I've got an appointment booked, I've gotta go, gotta go, I'm running late already. So in she goes into the hairdressers. As I said, she's really skinned, she's running out of money, she's got like, I think, she, I think it was like 50 francs left, something like that. It was, it was, she's running really quite low. And, but she's feeling really sorry for herself at this point. And she's like, I'm gonna get my hair done, sod it, just blow it, let's get her hair done, feel myself, make myself feel a bit better. So she's there getting her hair done. And then she kind of gets um, spotted, scouted, that's the right word, um, to be a potential model for a designer. So um, this designer has a fashion show coming up in Paris, um, but his model, one of his models, has broken her leg and um, the person that sees her thinks that she has the correct measurements as the model. So she says, could you come and try out? We'll take your measurements. If you're successful, you can meet the designer, see what he thinks. Would you be interested? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> so off she goes and her measurements are down to the centimetre, the, cent the um, same as this other girl that broke her leg. Um, so she tries on a dress, then she tries on the wedding dress, which is the dress that finishes the fashion show. Um, and she meets a designer, all goes well, and she gets the job. And this book is essentially about Anthea becoming a fashion model in Paris, but with relationships and love and romance scattered throughout. And 
Oh, I just loved it. This book is just so, so me, down to a T. I love books on fashion. I love books that have romance element to it. And I just love, love, love this book. So much so that I did read it in a day, as I said. Um, but I mean, there has to be something about it for me to enjoy it that much to read it in a day. So what did I love? First of all, I love how fashion was written. I don't know if the author, um, Mary Birchall, who has written many books um, uh, under different names, um, had a real passion and love for fashion, um, but it does very much feel like that throughout the novel. I love how fashion is written with such flair and creativity. I've actually tabbed a little bit here that I want to read to you. So this is towards the end of the novel. And this is when the designer is talking to one of his models. And he says this. Fashion is an ever-changing mistress, or in your case, I suppose a lover. It is the most fickle thing there is. Always to be wooed, never completely won, fascinating, demanding, and completely ruthless. Oh, I love that. I thought that was just so, so well done. I love how light this book is, how airy this book is. I love how quick this book is. Um, you go from one day to the next. There's never a dull point. There's never a lull point. All the characters in here are wonderful. You know who you're meant to love. You hate who you're meant to hate. And it's just, I mean, hate's a strong word, dislike. Um, but it's just so wonderfully twee. It's it's quite tongue-in-cheek, it's quite fluffy, and it's just one of these books I just love. I have to say that it wasn't as predictable as I thought it was going to be in terms of romance, because there's kind of three different possible suitors of this book. There is her fiance, her ex-fiance, that it does turn up in the book um, further on. It's not just you hear about him, he is there. Um, there is Roger um, and there is the designer himself. And who you kind of possibly think you she might end up with isn't necessarily who she ends up with. And um, it, it's all a bit, ooh, <laughs> twist, turns. And it's not as predictable as you might think it is. Um, and I was gripped right to the end. And I mean, I love books that are predictable, uh, but um, now that I know how it's going to end, I know that next time I read this, I'm gonna love this even more because I know how it ends. <laughs> um, I just adored it. I loved how fashion was written. I loved how Anthea was written. I loved how all the other models were written. I loved how everyone, despite this being, you know, 188 pages, was not just a cardboard cut out. I really felt like these could be real people. And in my head, this is going to sound silly, but in my head, I had Anthea as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so I was imagining Marilyn Monroe playing Anthea because I think she could do that so well, just because obviously, well, aesthetic wise, yes, Marilyn is Norma Jean, whatever you want to call her, was a stunning woman, you know, that aside, so she could be a model, absolutely. Um, so synonymous with vintage fashion of the 1950s, absolutely. But also, she can play funny. She can play a character that is so likeable, but also she can play a character that is really vulnerable. And I think that's what someone needed. And hence why Marilyn Monroe came to my head, because there are times in this where it's actually quite sad because she's reflecting on her past and her past like keep following her and it's just like, oh. Um, but yeah, I just loved it. If you love books on vintage fashion, if you love books from mid 20th century, then I think you'll absolutely love this. I certainly did and I thought it was wonderful. And um, Oh, I just can't recommend this enough. So if in this review I have enticed you and you think, oh, that sounds right at my street, please do go ahead and find yourself a copy of Under the Stars of Paris by Mary Birchall. I found mine um, secondhand, obviously, uh, from, I think I got this off eBay, I think. Um, but have a look online and find yourself a copy. I don't think this is in print anymore, um, which is such a shame because I would love everyone to read this book. It's just, 
it's just wonderful. It's one of these books that if you ever feel a little bit down, it'll perk me right up. <laughs> Absolutely, I just thought it was magnificent. Um, and it's a book that I know that I'm going to read over and over and over and over again. I loved it. Now, down to you again, seeing as a few of you recommended Under the Stars in Paris by Mara Birchall, do you have any more recommendations from me from 20th century up to about the year 1980, I would say, um, about fashion? It could be working in magazines, it could be working in a shop, it could be being a mannequin um, and modelling clothes. The world is your oyster. Um, please leave me any recommendations in the comment section below because I do appreciate them, I do read them and I do go ahead and read your recommendations. So please, please, please keep them coming. So thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to talking to you in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this book. Let me know what you think of the sound of this book, even if you don't go ahead and read it. And I look forward to seeing you for my next video. Take care for now. Bye.